Welcome to the first of several online discussions sponsored by the Harrelson County Alliance for Responsible Waste Management. My name is Richard Klein. My organization, Community and Environmental Defense Services, was hired by the Alliance to assist in moving waste management towards a more responsible philosophy. This presentation is 25 minutes long. We'll then spend the next 35 minutes answering your questions. Everyone will be muted except Alliance co-chairs, Tommy Crawford, Scott Cosper, and me. If you join by Zoom, then please note your questions in the chat section. Others can email questions to help at CEDS.org. This discussion is being recorded. We'll post it on the Alliance web and Facebook pages and email a link of the presentation to all of our supporters. The Alliance formed in response to the massive landfill proposed by Solid Solutions. These are our goals with respect to the Solid Solutions proposal and a more responsible waste management approach. First, to prevent Harrelson County from becoming the home of the largest landfill in Georgia, making it Georgia's garbage central. Second, to reduce the harm done to those living near the Polk County landfill, where Harrelson County waste is presently dumped. Third, to turn waste into wealth via recycling to create more jobs and bolster the regional economy. Many of you participated in an online survey where we asked what you wanted to learn more about. This graph shows that potential landfill impacts was the issue of greatest concern. Much of this presentation will be devoted to impacts. We'll also outline our strategy for helping the county move away from a near total dependence on landfills to a more responsible way of managing the waste generated in our homes and businesses. With regard to potential landfill impacts, We'll provide a summary of what's known about each of these. Health of area residents and landfill air pollution, potential well and stream contamination, truck traffic, loss of rural scenic atmosphere, property value loss, and loss of quality of life. The 2000 acre outlined in orange in these arrows is what we believe to be the site of the proposed landfill. On the left, you see where the site is in relation to the entirety of Harrelson County. On the right is a closer look at the 2,000 acre site. The actual footprint of the landfill is proposed to be 300 acres. At this point, we do not know where within the 2,000 acre site the 300 acre landfill would be located. Here are a few of the specifics we do know. Based on acreages and capacity of existing Georgia landfills, the proposed landfill might accommodate 40 million tons of waste. Solid Solution says they'll accept waste from up to 50 miles away. Solid Solution, the portion of Georgia within 50 miles is outlined with orange in the area on the right. On average, Georgia landfills have 51 years of capacity from opening to closure. We assume the Solid Solutions facility will be designed for a similar lifespan. Each of the yellow dots in the area on the left is one of the existing municipal landfills in Georgia. The red dot is the Grady Road landfill in Polk County. It is this landfill which receives most of the waste generated by Harrelson County homes and businesses. Note that currently the largest landfill in Georgia is 210 acres on a 560 acre site. Therefore, at 300 acres on a 2000 acre site, the proposed Solid Solutions landfill would be the biggest in Georgia. Now let's turn to what's likely the most troublesome potential impact of a landfill, the effect of landfill air pollution on public health. This is the portion of the Alliance webpage where we provide a summary of 14 scientific papers regarding the health effects of pollutants released from the air from landfills. 
Many of these papers noted an increased risk of adverse health effects among those living up to two miles from municipal landfills. Adverse health effects may be experienced by those living along the route traveled by trucks hauling waste to a landfill. In the next three slides, we'll provide a brief summary of the most insightful papers. In this 2008 paper, the researchers compared health risk of a New York City incinerator to a regional municipal landfill in Pennsylvania. The researchers concluded that both incinerators and landfill air pollution emissions cause a slight increase in cancer risk. Of the two, the cancer risk was five times higher for landfill emissions compared to incinerators. The researchers calculated there would be one additional cancer case per 390,000 people affected by landfill emissions. The researchers also estimated one additional cancer case per 39 million people exposed along the route traveled by trucks hauling waste to the landfill. This University of North Carolina paper documented the results of a study of those living up to three miles of up to three quarters of a mile from a landfill. The researchers reported that odors from the landfill were strongly associated with preventing people from opening their windows or going outside, feeling dizzy or lightheaded, headaches, a generally ill feeling, negative moods, a burning sensation in the eyes, nose, or throat, and upper respiratory symptoms. In this 2005 paper, British researchers reported an increased risk of birth effects among those living within two miles of landfills. In summary, these and 11 other studies show there is a definite increased risk of adverse health effects among those living up to two miles from a landfill. The risk is slight for birth defects, cancer, and other more serious illnesses. However, the risk is high for less severe health effects and quality of life impacts. Modern landfills are designed with a series of pipes to collect the gases released from waste decomposing within a landfill. The gases are then treated by flaring. It is unclear though how effective this and other gas collection treatment systems are in resolving the odors, nausea, nose and throat irritation, cancer and other adverse health effects of landfill emissions. Now let's turn to possible contamination of nearby wells and streams. The aerial on the left shows the 2,000 acre landfill site in orange. The yellow line bounds the area within two miles of the site. Georgia law requires that new landfills be at least two miles from major water supply wells to prevent contamination. In theory then, small wells could also be at risk if within two miles. There are more than 500 homes in this two mile area, most of which rely on wells. The review article pictured on the right listed 133 pollutants detected in the contaminated liquid known as leachate that can flow from a landfill. Though leachate pollutants will change over time, this study noted that the threat to human and aquatic resource health may never end. Since 1996, new landfills must have impermeable liners and caps to prevent rainwater entry or the escape of leachate in the groundwaters. New landfills must also have a leachate collection and treatment system. In a perfect world, the liner, cap, and treatment system would forever prevent leachate from escaping. In reality, no one knows just how long a liner cap will last though estimates range from a couple of decades to several thousand years. As you'll see shortly, it's not uncommon for leachate to escape the lined capped landfill. Modern landfills must also be ringed with monitoring wells to detect any leachate escaping into nearby groundwaters. When leaks are detected, it may be necessary to excavate the waste to locate and repair the leak. Digging in the landfill waste has plagued area residents with horrendous odors and adverse health effects. 
A landfill can lower property value if it can be seen, heard, or smelled from a home, or waste trucks pass by homes regularly. Should one's well become contaminated, then property value could decline drastically. <clears throat> the report pictured here is one of the most thorough and recent assessments of the effects of landfills on property value. The researchers found that high volume landfills always lower area property values. A high volume landfill is one that receives 500 or more tons of waste per day. At 2,000 tons per day, the solid solutions landfill could be very high volume. The researchers documented that properties within two miles of a high volume landfill lose 10% of their value. The yellow line in this area is two miles from the proposed landfill. There are about 550 homes in this two mile area. We estimated that collectively, the 550 homeowners could lose $8.3 million in property value if the Solid Solutions Landfill was approved. Harrelson County could lose a half million dollars a year in property tax revenue. And property value loss, as well as health and environmental impacts, could be far greater if things go wrong at the proposed landfill. Here's a listing of some of the things that could and have gone wrong at landfills. Gas collection treatment system failures, impermeable liner or cap leaks, excavation of landfills to repair leaks, collapse of a landfill, lightning strikes then fire, future mining of waste, monitoring well failure, post 30 year monitoring maintenance budget shortfalls, and Georgia EPD inspection limitations. Here are just two of many examples of how things actually did go wrong at existing Georgia landfills. The 2020 article on the left describes a major failure at the Pine Bluff Municipal Landfill in Cherokee County. Carolyn Durando, who lives less than a mile from the landfill, said she couldn't escape the smell of garbage. There were days last year when she couldn't go outside due to the smell. According to the US EPA, this landfill has a gas collection and treatment system, yet it still released intolerable odors into nearby communities. The article on the right, also published in 2020, accounts landfill leachate pollution at the Augusta Municipal Landfill. Presumably, this landfill has a liner and collection system, yet leachate still escaped. Waste generated in Harrelson County is hauled to the Polk County Grady Road landfill for disposal. Area residents have been complaining for years about odors and other Grady Road landfill impacts. The 2019 court order on the right summarized the odor impact as follows. Those living near the landfill testified that they could not go outside their property or open the windows in their homes because of the intensity of the odors. Sometimes the fumes were so intense that they could hardly stay inside their homes. One witness said that the odor smelled like dead animals. It is clear that the enjoyment of the property was vastly reduced by the landfill actions. You may be wondering what we should do with our waste if we don't send it to a landfill. Well, the good news is that, the, that with 21st century technology and, best, and the best markets in the U.S., 80% of the materials we landfill can be turned into saleable products via recycling and com composting. You may have heard that since China stopped accepting materials, the U.S. recycling market is dead. This simply isn't true. In fact, Georgia and other Southeast states have the strongest market for recyclables in the country. The map on the left shows all the manufacturing operations in the southeast that use recyclables to produce carpeting and many other goods for sale. So instead of sending our waste to landfills, we should turn it into jobs and a healthier regional economy by expanding recycling. To succeed in reducing landfill needs by 80% or more, we'll need more efficient means of collecting recyclables. Many communities rely on automated collection 
that only requires setting out recyclables once every two weeks. In the more rural, less densely populated areas of Harrelson County, we can employ options that work well in similar areas. Some of the experts we've consulted believe the possibility exists of upgrading the county's current transfer station to a green industry commercial park that can attract manufacturers utilizing recyclables as feedstock. The Harrelson Green Industry Park might be modeled after the Alachua County, Florida Environmental Park, where space is reserved for recycling, composting, and reuse companies. We could attract industries like St. Vincent de Paul, which has 10 operations on the East Coast and is always looking for new locations. But this new industry will only come if recyclable and compostable materials are available and not buried in a massive landfill. You may be concerned that turning the transfer station into a recycling part could create problems for area residents. In modern recycling facilities, all processing is done within a completely enclosed building like that pictured here. The area on the right shows the location of this facility in my home state of Maryland. Note that while there are many nearby homes, this facility generates few complaints. Since all processing is done indoors and the building has good air pollution control, the facility causes little noise or odor impact. Road access is via an interstate highway, so neighborhoods are not subjected to truck traffic. Here's an analysis of what recycling alone could do for the regional economy. Of the 40 million tons that would be buried in the solid solutions landfill, 40% is recyclable. For every 1,000 tons recycled, the regional economy gets 1.57 new jobs, <clears throat> $79,000 in personal income, and $3,600 in tax revenue. <clears throat> Annual economic benefits could include 493 jobs, $25 million in personal income, and $1.1 million in tax revenue. <clears throat> but to reap these rewards, we need a 21st century solid waste plan. The current Harrelson County solid waste plan is on the left. This 2008 plan is based on technology and data that's nearly 20 years old. The plan expired three years ago. We understand the county commissioners are in the process of gathering the information needed to draft a new plan. The Alliance has embarked on a comprehensive strategy to provide the county commissioners with the public, technical, and legal support needed to adopt a, a more re responsible solid waste plan. To receive state permits, the, the commissioners must include the proposed landfill in the plan. We believe the new Harrelson County solid waste plan should set the goal for greatly minimizing reliance on landfills. This zero waste goal can be achieved by maximizing waste minimization, recycling, composting, and other options. We're calling on the county commissioners not to include the solid solutions landfill in the new solid waste plan. Instead, the plan should be designed to substantially reduce the volume of waste needing burial. In the meantime, the plan will call for sending waste that can't be recycled to the Polk County landfill, which has 27 to 50 years of remaining capacity. The map on the left shows the numerous U.S. communities that have adopted zero waste plans to eliminate the need for landfills over a decade or two. San Francisco leads all of the U.S. cities with 80% of the waste that would otherwise be landfilled diverted through source reduction, reuse, recycling, and composting. A number of other U.S. cities and counties have reached a 50% diversion rate. The Alliance doesn't believe the benefits of the solid solutions landfill are worth the risk since expanded recycling, composting, and other programs could greatly reduce Harrelson County need for landfill capacity. 
Plus, the Polk County landfill has decades of capacity, so we just don't need a new landfill. But just because the Polk County landfill has lots of capacity shouldn't mean we should settle for just saying no to the Solid Solutions landfill. Our waste, no doubt, has an impact on Polk County residents. Reducing our landfill needs by 80% or more safeguards them and us. This is our strategy for preserving our quality of life and theirs. The Alliance will provide the Harrelson Board of County Commissioners with, first, the public support needed to say no to the mega landfill and yes to a zero waste plan. Second, we'll help the County Commissioners say no in a way that solid solutions can be reversed on court appeal. And third, we'll assist in educating county residents about why recycling composting is best for them and Polk County residents. We hope that this education will result in widespread voter support for the expenditures required to increase collection of recyclables and other transition costs. Here are the main permits and approvals Solid Solutions needs to build the mega landfill. The county commissioners must rezone the site and include the landfill in the solid waste plan. The Regional Commission will assess the potential impacts of the landfill. The Georgia EPD must issue several permits approvals. Of these, the rezoning and plan amendment are the most critical. Once both are granted, it will be extremely difficult to stop the mega landfill. It is for this reason that our strategy is focused on providing the County Commissioners with the public supported need to say no to the rezoning and yes to a zero waste plan. Thus far, nearly 1,200 Harrelson County residents have urged the County Commissioners not to approve the Solid Solutions Mega Landfill. Each yellow dot in the area on the left is the home of those opposed to the Solid Solutions Landfill. We have promised to rally these 1,200 residents in support of our County Commissioners' efforts to move from a landfill-based solid waste plan to a more responsible recycling composting based zero waste plan. And the number of supporters grows daily. We are confident that with this ever expanding support, our county commissioners will say no to a mega landfill and yes to responsible waste management. Putting modesty aside for a moment, the Alliance has assembled an impressive team of experts to win this campaign. My organization, Community and Environmental Defense Services, has been assisting the Alliance with mobilizing support and compiling research on landfill impacts as well as responsible waste management options. Each of the red dots in the U.S. map on the right is a place where we've helped folks elsewhere protect their communities from landfills and other poorly planned projects. We created the Alliance webpage on the left the online petition, and this presentation. The Alliance has also engaged the Atlanta law firm of Stack & Associates. Stack & Associates has won more landfills than any other landfill battles than any other Georgia law firm. But the principal reason for engaging Stack & Associates is to ensure the county commissioners say no to the Solid Solutions landfill in a way that stands up on appeal. If the county is forced to grant the rezoning and solid waste plan amendment solid solutions needs, then there will be little to prevent the landfill from opening. No doubt you have many questions. I can assure you Tommy, Scott, and other Alliance board members, and I, we've got lots of questions too. And no doubt the county commissioners do as well. As I mentioned at the start, this is the first of several online opportunities to raise questions and get answers. We're thinking future online discussions will feature these two experts. Dr. Selman is an internationally recognized expert on recycling and composting. Will Sagar is arguably the leading expert in the Southeast on recycling markets. This brings the presentation to a close. Now Tommy, Scott, and I will try to answer your, your questions those that you've chatted or emailed to us. Thank you for your patience.